we can start entering the registration window quickly. This is what we have uh, discussed yesterday. I think we have stopped up to this. So the slide, the slide visible to you. I think, uh, yeah, so last class we have discussed about um, the addressing modes, right? So there are uh, four different groups, huh? there are five different groups. Addressing modes, uh, full addressing modes, in fact. And uh, I think uh, uh, we have started with this in the last class. Four different addressing modes we have studied in the last class with some examples. So, basically, addressing mode refers to the way by which the instruction refers to the source of the source of okay, not the destination. So, in the instructions uh, uh, like this, Instructions like this. Uh, so here, this is the source. This is the destination. Right. This uh, there shouldn't be any problem for you. Now let's further proceed. Let us complete all these addressing modes with examples today. And we'll also be able to introduce you about uh, the instruction sets, okay. the classification of the instruction sets. So next on the line is the base addressing mode. Well, base addressing. What is the base addressing? Mode? So the base addressing mode uh, based uh, the BX or the BP. Okay. The BX or the BP registers are used to hold the base value of the effective address calculation. So this is very important. The effective address calculation. Okay. So EA. So I used to say this. So EA, the effective address. Right. And a signed 8 bit or unsigned 16 bit displacement. In these specified instructions. So, so what it tells is that in an instruction, we will be either using a BX or we'll be either using or we'll be using a DP register to hold the base value. And in addition to that, there will also be a signed 8 bit number, otherwise, an unsigned 8 bit number. Signed 8 bit number means it is plus or minus. It can be uh, plus 5, plus 10, uh, like that, or minus 20. Unsigned means it's always a positive at 16 bit. Displacement that is used to refer to the displacement in this specific instruction. So, in case of the 8 bit displacement, it is sign extended because all the registers are 16 bits wide. When we represent uh, uh, an 8 bit value, what happens is that the sign is extended. Sign is extended. I will illustrate it very quickly to a 16 bit before adding to the base value. When the BX holds the base value of the effective address. This is EA's effective address. 20 bit physical address is calculated from BX register and the BS register. They will be taken from the next uh, illustration. On the other hand, when the BP is used, because we have seen that either uh, uh, BX or BP can be used in the instruction. When BX is used, it is the BS instruction used so for the calculation of the physical address, EA. Okay. The physical address. All these terminals are very important. This physical address, the effective address, all these things are very important. 
right so when uh, the bp is used for the bp the word the bp bp stand for the base point so it holds the base value of the effective voltage then along with the bp it is the stack segment register ss stand for the stack segment register that is going to be used for the calculation of the pcb voltage right so let us see now the example what is it this is an instruction move ax uh, comma bx plus 08h so this is the base of this bx this is displacement Displacement. It is a displacement, uh, and we can see that it is a, a eight-bit value. Only the eight-bit values can be put in two digits. If the sixteen-bit number, then four digits will be there. That's a condition, right? So now, uh, so what? What does this particular instruction do? So we say the processor move ax comma px plus zero eight and the square bracket. indicates that content right the content of this particular bx plus this displacement content of the memory location whose address is specified here will be brought in and then that is going to be put into the ax register that's a mean right content so this is a classical example of a memory address so that is what we are saying now hello sir ah yes tell me say the dvd is is blurring sir this your slide is not visible Slide is not visible. Yes, sir. It, it's been blurring a lot, sir. Very yes. totally blurring. Is it very dull or what? Yes, sir. Totally blurred, blurred out. Totally blurred, sir. Okay. Thank you. so that is a displacement okay now so what happens is that uh, first of all as the slide said this particular thing 08 may be constant is sign extended right what is sign extended 08 can be written like this this is 08 binary right so in a binary the maximum significant bit is considered to be sign right sign bit so if that is 1 it implies it is a negative number if it is 0 that implies that it is a positive number. and there are three different types of uh, error perception by uh, types like uh, uh sign bit magnitude representation one complement representation two complement so in the intel family of microprocessor it is conventional that it uses a uh, two complement those complement representation of the negative numbers so in all the three cases the msb the maximum significant bit is zero or positive or for the negative numbers is that clear so what they say is this 8 bit number is going to be fit into a 16 bit register so what happens is that they are simply extending it the sign bit is extended to fill 16 bit numbers Right, so that is called the sign extension. The 8-bit number is now extended to 16-bit number. So when we extend it, the sign bit is replicated till the last bit. So it becomes now 008H. It's not as good. 08 became 008H. So I mean, whether it is 8-bit number or 16-bit number, you can understand the principle that now it is positive. The displacement is positive. 
Then the effective address is calculated like this: the content of the content of the BX register, uh, so the content of the BX register with this uh, 16-bit value 008 is added, so that you get a 16-bit effective address. The base address is calculated from BS, as we have, as mentioned here. So BS into 16. This we have ex explained yesterday itself. So this this process is required for making it as 20 bit address. Understand? Because otherwise it's 16 bit. So product of a 16 uh, makes a 16 bit value to become 20 bit address because the processor here is going to address a 20 bit. Address. So now uh, having calculated the BA, the memory address, 20 bit memory address, is merely the sum of base address plus the effective address. Yeah, so now it's visible to you. So now what happens is it goes to the memory, it goes to the memory, and then takes that particular uh, 16 bit constant, loads into the accumulator register. So are you able to see now the values? Read, brought in from a memory which is external to the processor and then it is stored inside the microprocessor in its AX system, the accumulator Right, so this can also be understood like this. So that is one thing. Uh, so here. So it goes to the memory, if it is uh, byte organized, if the memory can hold only bytes, so it goes to the memory address, whatever the byte available, so 8 bit values transform to AL. The next location, whatever that is available, will be brought back to the AH two, two read operations. So it depends upon whether you have a 16 bit memory or whether you have a 8 bit memory. Most of the time, you have only the byte organized memory. So this two, two read operations will be done. And if you have a memory and circuitry, everything, so that in just one read cycle, all the 16 bits can be read together, then this is Still, it is not clear to you. Let me give you a numerical example here. Uh, say, assume that uh, 2, 8, B, B, 6 is a memory location. Right? So, assume that there is a value called 2. Next location, it will say B. Okay, and uh, assume that the memory address is now 28DE6. 28DE6 by calculation of all these things, by DS and all that. Right? So, after the execution of this particular instruction, before the execution of this instruction, if AX was have, having some value, now, after the execution of this, after so AX will be done. Can you tell me? All of you can tell me. What will be the value? E by two E according to this. Particular. Okay. Because it goes to the specified memory address, takes that particular value, puts that into the EAL. It goes to this particular uh, location, next location. E. What is the uh, next location? It becomes E seven. So this location. This particular value is brought, and then this is put into the AH. So AH, AL, otherwise, AX. So this is operation carried out by this particular. So, what is the difference between uh, this addressing node and this addressing node? So, here uh, we have only one argument here. Right? So, there is only one argument here, BXM. In this instruction, we have two arguments, bx plus zero. There is a displacement also, right? So that is why it is called as based addressing. In fact, this is another form of register indirect addressing because we don't specify the address of the operand directly, but now it is indirectly set with two uh, two components. One is the bx register, and another is a 8 bit displacement, 8 bit displacement or a 16 bit displacement. Okay, in this example, we are seeing a 8 bit displacement. You understand? Understand this concept? 
so yeah now let's go on to the next thing. so you know if you don't understand again you know read it and then work it out like what i did you take some numerical examples and then understand so that uh, you know self study will improve your understanding so because of the lack of time i don't spend much time on this particular thing let us go to the next step then next is the index address the index address what is this index address in uh, so when i say index what you should come into your mind is there are two kind of index registers right in the 8086 architecture there are two index registers one is si what is si what is bi anybody this i stand for source index di stand for destination index okay so there are, there are two uh, index registers available in the process architecture so these things will be used so if these if this either of these instruction uh, either of these registers are used then you can say that it conforms to the index so they are used hold an index value of a memory data and a sign 8 bit or uh, and sign the 16 bit displacement in this case by in instruction similar to that particular the only difference is that in the case of base addressing mode we will be either using yeah we will be using bx register or a bp register uh, here we are using either si register or a bi register that's a difference so displacement is added to the index value in si or bi register to obtain the effective address So again, the same thing in case of eight-bit displacement with the signed extender, sixteen-bit uh, displacement is given. It is always unsigned. It is not signed. So there is no need for extension. So example, a similar thing you can understand here. Move C X comma S I plus zero A to H. So so now we can understand that that the C X C X is source and it is a destination, and this is Memory address. This is the memory address of the source. Source. Source address. So it, because there is a square bracket, so this is going to compute the memory address, and from there it is going to read the processor. Okay. Now you look at this example. So what happens is the first operation done is that this eight bit value. A bit value we normally will have uh, uh, two digits only, right? But now we are seeing three digits. Leading zero doesn't come in. Don't care. Right. So it's only a convention. Either you say zero A two or A two, it remains the same thing. Understand? This means A bit value A two. So can you all quickly put a binary pattern of A two? Let me see. The chat window. Do it fast. How do you write uh, A2? How do you write A2 in binary? Do it fast. All of you put it in the chat window. So, a bit value. So, so a bit value happens to be like this: one, zero, one, zero. This is a. Two is zero, zero, one, zero. right? So, a two. This is a two. So, this is a. This is two. So, what you should understand is that this is the sine bit, as I have written. Sine bit. The sign extension means this one is going to be repeated. How many times? Eight times. Because then only you get a system bit. So when you put a eight times uh, one, so that is nothing but f. So now the value becomes f f a two. So a two when it is sign extended, it becomes f of a two. The idea here is that still the number is a negative number. Understand? Because we are seeing a one, 
And just on the previous slide, I said when you see sine is equal to one, it implies the negative number. Zero is a positive number. So it is a negative number. So negative number. Okay. So the rest of the thing is uh, similar. The effective address is calculated as an addition of the source index register and this constant. Base address is computed from the DS always, data segment register. And then now it becomes a 20 bit value. By this particular process, it becomes a 20 bit value. And then the memory address, the physical memory address, is calculated as a sum of uh, this base address, and then the effective address. The effective address is calculated in this particular equation. So now that you have uh, uh, as CX loaded directly from the memory address, it is a 16 bit reading operation. So if it supports only 8 bit uh, reading operation, then it will have two reading operations. First, it will, it will read from the current memory address, and then the higher order byte will be taken from the subsequent memory address. It is going to be two reading operations. Let me give a numerical example of that. So that So let us assume that SI is equal to uh, 5, 6, A, okay, arbitrarily, SI is equal to 5, 6, A, 2. And uh, yeah, right. Now, the question for you is you please compute this memory address. It fast, all of you do it. So, if you're able to give me the answer, uh, I mean, the piece of you will learn. So, you never have to again take back the code. SI initially say is 5682, that's our small value, right? So, for this particular instruction, this instruction, right? So, it is going to calculate the memory address. What is the memory address for this? Particular? Can anybody do it? Do it quickly. If you want any other information, you please ask me. If you don't understand the question, please ask me. PS, uh, let us assume it to be uh, say one zero. Same that this is one zero. Out, do it fast. Take your phone book and then look it out and then tell me. All of you post that. What is the memory address? So, memory address is going to be a 20 bit number. So, what is that you're going to tell me?
So the idea is like this. So this is the idea of indexing. So the source index register will be pointing to here. So what is this value? What is the like example with the calculate? Right. Now the second offerant is the displacement. Right. A2. F of A2. Right. This is a displacement. And uh, undoubtedly it is a negative number. So what it implies is that the byte to be fetched is going to be available in the backward reference. So from here it will go back, low address. Right? Low address. So if it is a positive number, there will be a forward reference. This is a forward reference, this is a backward reference. So from my location, I can go some n number of bytes ahead or I can go some n number of bytes backward. So that is a basic displacement to be either forward or backward from my index. Right. So the index will remain as it is. Index will not be affected. So the index register will be available. So I will be able to tell how many bytes ahead my data is available or how many bytes backward I can go my data. That is a point that is Okay, so did you all comp compute that particular value? What is the value you're getting? There are two things. First of all, you have to calculate uh, the effective address, and then only you can compute this. Anybody managed to find it? So, it should be very simple 5, 6, 8, 2. Uh, then FF. Right? So that is a displacement. This is what you are going to add. Add them together. So what will you get here now? So 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, A plus A is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 is 1, 4. You can verify. So 1, 7 is F. Uh, 7 plus 15. What is 7 plus 15? 20. So 22 minus 16 uh, is 22 minus 16 is 6. Okay. And uh, what is this? Uh, what did I say now? So 7 plus 7 plus 15. 22, yes. 22. This 2 goes here. Okay. So 7 plus 15 again. So this will be your this will be your thing. Right. So this displacement will be added in this particular. So as I said, so you have a source pointer, this will remain as it is. This will just go back. So it's A2. And uh, this this kind of addition is basically um, what would happen? You are adding a positive number and a negative number. This is equal to subtraction. You are actually subtracting something from this particular by 6 A2. Okay, so what is that absolute value of subtracting? You want to take it, you have to take the uh, two's complement. If you take the two's complement, you will come Is that clear? So, this is the idea here. So, the first slide talked to you about forward reference, and in this example, it is shown that even negative, the, the backward reference is also possible for a particular thing. This is applicable to the base addressing mode also. Here also. This example, uh, it's only an example. So here, a positive value is given. Here also, you can give a negative value so that the bx from the bx, it can go back. Otherwise, it can go forward. So, okay. So I will give you some assignments so that people can work it out and then understand that. Better. The next addressing mode is the base uh, indexed addressing mode. Based index addressing. Mode. And this is called so because, as you can see from this example, it is going to use both the combinations of the registers. One is a BX or BP, and another is SI or BI. Both of them are used. If only BX or BP is used, it's based. If only SI or BI is used, it's indexed. If both of them are used in a combination, it is based index of the same. That's what. So you may uh, get confused now why these kind of uh, things are available. You know, the real purpose, the real application, you come to know only when you 
become a good programmer of assembly language. So when you start writing programs, you will see that oh, these kind of assembly modes are really handy, and it solves. I mean, it helps to solve a problem very quickly without writing, uh, without the need for writing a very lengthy program. Very quickly, I can write and write. Right. So now, uh, since you people don't have much of knowledge and uh, experience in the writing the program, assembly language program, as of now you understand the concepts of it, and uh, as you go by, you will come to know and understand. So in the based index addressing mode, the effective address is computed uh, uh, from the sum of the base register, such as a BX or BP, an index register, and the displacement also. There is also displacement. There are three parts: base, index, and then the displacement. Property. Okay. So displacement rules are the same thing. Uh, eight bit means uh, sign extended, or uh, uh, sixteen bit means it is uh, uh, not sign extended. Is the same rules. So this instruction is you move know, dx comma dx plus si plus zero h. So this tells the assembler or the microprocessor that you go to a memory location whose address is the sum of the dx register and sum of si register, and then from there you go some ten bytes forward. That's it. You go some ten bytes forward. That's right. So it will go to that particular memory location. And the process is the same thing. E A is first. The first operation is sign extension. The effective address is computed as a sum of the B X register, the C register, and the sign extended value. Base address, as usual, is again E S is used. Uh, this is to make 20 bit number. Then memory address is merely the computation sum of base address and effective address. And these are the two possibilities. Either a 16 bit word operation, read operation. Or uh, eight bit two sub subsequent memory locations. It is going to be. The next is uh, string addressing mode. Okay, string. What is a string? Many a times we come across a string operations. Uh, like for example, my name Salvaraj or addressing. They are all composed of some alphabet string. So in the computer programming itself, you might have studied that string refers to uh, an array of characters. An array of characters. Right, so this is employed in string operations to obtain string data. So effective address of the source data is stored in the SI register always, and the effective address of the destination is stored in the destination register. So both the registers are used. SI is used, the DI is also used. So SI, as the name suggests, it will always point to the source. Just for example. String operations. I might want to copy a string from one place to another place. It's like a copy, right? So your uh, the source index will be pointing to the source operand. DI will be pointing to the destination where I want to transfer. So that's the whole idea. So segment register for calculating the base address of the source data is DS. As you can see here, this very important point. Please note it. DS and ES both of them are used here. Right, so ES is meant for the destination array, and DS is for the source. So DS and SI, ES and BI together will be used for pointing to the source array, source string, and the destination. There are many instructions we will see. So example here is a move, move yes. So so far in the previous example, you have seen only instruction like M O V, but now you are seeing M O. Yes, move string. So when you see yes, read it as string, move string. So move string and then byte. That's all. You have to say only the byte. Move string byte. So what is this byte and what is exactly it is going to do? So if you look at here, uh, operations carried out are what? First of all, calculation of the source memory location is done by, uh, is done like this. The effective address is equal to source address. Okay. And then base address is. Uh, is taken as data segment register into 16. This is to make contribution. Memory address is a sum of VM. And then destination address is calculated like this. Uh, so effective address uh, is just copied to the DI. Uh, and then this is ES. So as I told you, this, this particular point, this is what is listed. So 
this is what so the operation done here is that from a memory array right ma from the source from the source array from the source array every byte is going to be copied to another memory address another memory address which is computed like this which is computed in this application destination okay uh, so the idea is uh, this. so there are two memory array say this is memory array this is ma so you have some bytes here so all these bytes are going to be for example i had silver sc it's a driving stored here initially this particular array may be an empty after move this move this string so s will be copied e will be copied uh, l will be copied and so on so just one instruction is capable of copying all of them right all of them will be copied together so again the, there is a provision for you to copy the strings uh, either in the forward direction or in the backward direction so here this df is used can you tell me quickly what is a df just chat what is df df stand for what is df stand for it's a flag two it's a flag direction flag yes so direction flag so it's a flag so it can have only two values either uh, one or zero so if df is set to one we have to set it if the direction flag is set to one before the execution of this instruction then uh, it is adjusted like source index becomes source index address minus one right minus one destination index uh, is decremented by one so it is like if you, if you go like this right so the direction flag is equal to zero i mean so this goes uh, this goes backward reverse backward whereas this goes in the forward direction so direction flag is equal to zero so from here First, it is equal to automatically next character will be taken. Automatically next character will be taken. Uh, so, what is not uh, what is missing in this slide is that how many uh, what is the length of the particular array is normally specified in the C X register. The C X register we have the length of the string. Length of the string. Okay. So, how many bytes it has to move will be normally maintained by the CX register. That's it. So move string by that's all. If you say that particular thing automatically, depending on so before doing this, we should have set the direction flag, we should have set the source index register, we should have set the destination index register as well. ஸ்ட்ரிங் <laughs> The next addressing mode, the group three, is addressing modes for I/O ports. So, in any microprocessor based system or a computing system, as I have told you, you have a CPU, you have a memory, and then you have uh, input output ports. Also. So, when you are dealing with input output ports, uh, what happens is that you have uh, you have to transfer something. You have to get some data value from the input unit. You have to transfer out something. from the processor so there are some exclusive instructions available over here so as the slide says uh, these addressing modes are used to access data from standard io map to the that's why io map to access io map to access 
or are they also called as the ports? Ports are the ways through which the information goes from one place. So in direct port at port address mode, an 8-bit port address is directly specified in the instruction. So every device we have some address, like memory have got an address, uh, it's 20 bits. The memory requires 20 bits for addressing. IO ports in 8-bit space systems require only 8-bit. Why? That we will see later. So that 8-bit address of the port is normally specified as part of the instruction. Of course, this, this is also very important. Square value uh, is also very important. In AL, 09 is an incorrect instruction. We cannot do that. So in order to make it, we need to put the square value. Operations done is that uh, the port address is now initialized as 09. Now that means that I want to refer to the ninth device. So from there, whatever that's available will be brought into the accumulator low byte, AL register. And it is an 8-bit read operation. That's what it should be. It is not a 16-bit operation. Right? So that's what it is. So this is something. It is a direct, uh, direct port addressing mode. The indirect uh, port addressing mode, uh, what happens is that the address of the port is indirectly specified in uh, the AX register. So, so we'll specify the name of the register which holds a port address. In 1886, the 16 bit port address is normally stored in the BX register. It's one of the general purpose register. So, this one. Out. So, can you tell me, like, uh, does it refer to the source or uh, the destination? Yeah, this is not a move insertion. So what happens is that this is the destination. This is the source. So that means that I want to move the content of the AX register, which is resident inside the processor architecture, to an output device whose address is specified, maintained indirectly in the BX register. So the port address is initialized with the content of the BX register. The content of the AX registers sent out of the processor whose address is this port. Right? So content of AX is moved to port whose address is specific to the BX system. So this is this is called indirect port addressing. There are two kind of things direct port addressing, another is indirect port addressing. So there are two kind of things. So as of now you understand this is a little bit different from move. Move instruction is used to transfer uh, the content of uh, one register into another register, or transfer the content of register into a memory location, or transfer a content of a memory location into a, uh, into a register. Whereas the in and out instructions, there are only two instructions. In for reading a byte from an input unit, out is meant for writing a data into an output unit. So these two things are then a relative addressing mode, the 11th addressing mode, group 5, is a relative addressing mode. So in this mode, the effective address of the program is specified relative to the uh, pointer, instruction pointer, just by an 8-bit signed displacement. Signed displacement. So example is shown here. So J is at uh, tells that this should be read as jump. On zero, otherwise a jump equals zero. Right. So this jump causes the program counter to be, I mean, the program flow to move to some other location. Some other location. Normally, what happens uh, when a, when a program is executed, the instruction pointer is incremented, pointing to the next instruction, next instruction. Sometimes in a program, we may want to take a decision, like in the uh, flow charting, we do. Right. So there is a condition checking here. So what will happen is that this will follow to the next instruction. If, for example, uh, yes, like this, right? Sometimes we may want to check if the condition happens to be no, then we might have to come. right. So this kind of uh, branching, conditional branching. Is very common in all the programming. So the microprocessor 80 is also supports. So we will see more about that later. So 
So what happens is that this is going to cause the instruction pointer to be incremented by added with 10, 0 is 10. So you can see, first operation is sign is 10. If, what is ZF? ZF stands for zero flag. Zero flag equal to one implies that the last carried operation resulted in zero copy. Okay. If zero implies it is a non-zero the two conditions. So if zero flag is equal to one, then because it's a condition passes, the effective address is simply addition of the instruction pointer plus this constant sign is Base address is again now base address is now port segment. In the previous examples, in the previous addressing modes, we have seen that DS was, was used. Some addressing modes, ES was also used. But now, because it is now altering the program flow, so already as I already told you, port segment is taken. Port segment is taken as a base pointer, and then the memory address, the SQL address is taken. And what happens if the zero flag uh, is equal to zero? Then we say the condition fails. If the condition fails, then the next instruction of the program, the instruction pointer goes to the next instruction. So it is very similar to here, right? It's very similar to here. Condition, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, passes, it just goes. Condition fails, it goes something else. So this is what is done here. So this is called relative addressing mode because, uh, because you, if you look at the memory like this, so if the instruction pointer is pointed to here, so let's say this is instruction n, this is instruction n plus one, and so on, and so on. We might want normally it goes to next instructions. So we might want to go to suddenly make a branch in here, skipping all these things. We might want to go to here. So how many bytes it has to go from here? Whether 10 bytes or 20 bytes or 100 bytes, etc. This is what is going to be done. Yeah, so now let me stop and put a question to you uh, to know whether you understand or not. Now I said this displacement could be uh, 10 or it could be 25, it could be 100. Is there any limit on this or can it be 1000? Can the displacement be 1000? It's a thought question. Right? Quickly, if you people are able to tell me, then I will be able to understand the idea. Yeah, you, you really understood the subject. You follow my question? In this example, it is said that display there is an 8 bit signed displacement is there. So, in this example, it is given as 10. So, I can make it 25, 100, like that. So, can I give 1000? Will it work or not? Does it make sense? It is not, no, it, it cannot be a very loose answer like this. Affirmative answer. So Gautam Kanna says no. Alamel Shakti says no. Uh, and again, Vishwa says depends upon the size of the memory. So depends upon the size of the memory is not the solid answer. Uh, so many of you say no, since it is the eight bit. So what is it? You tell me, what is upper bound? So, what will be the highest value? I think a uh, similar question I asked you in the previous class also. So, knowing that it is not possible because it's an 8 bit value, can you tell me an upper bound? Can I give 100? 100 makes it sense or not? Can I make my instruction pointer to go uh, from its current position to some 100 bytes away? Yes or no? So with an 8 bit, with an 8 bit, 2 power 8, 256 is possible. Understand? 256. So this implies that it could be number could be from 0, 1, 2, up to 255. This is unsigned. But we are talking about sign. In the sign the case now with the same 8 bits, we have to now reduce it. So, what will happen is that uh, 
half of them have to be negative and remaining half of them have to be positive numbers positive numbers so now we can guess that it will be like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 here minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 to maximum one. this is what i am asking what is this maximum extreme in what is this extreme in? 256 divided by equal to half some side right is equal to 120 so some 128 numbers on one side and another 127 numbers on another side right so can you tell me what is this number can it be 128 is very fine it is be 127 and verify these are all you know very very important things please understand students electronics students right i i want all of you people you know uh, prepare now itself for the gate examinations just getting this near beta from pandit engineering college or university uh does not speak about its quality you have to show your competency level right so you have to go for national level exit examination like gate kind of things. all of you whether the gate is going to be useful for your high studies or not whether you get a very good job without gate or not leave away but all of you should have a aim that i will prepare for a gate i will prove myself so that should be your attitude please do that very well so when you go for this kind of uh, gate examinations graduate attitude test in your examination which is conducted nationwide right so these are all very very important the fundamentals are very very important right so can you tell me what is this side can it be minus 127 yes 127 you will be surprised that it will become minus 128 how oh, this is basically a mathematics if you people you people please understand that so so with this particular thing with this relative addressing mode i can make the processor to go branch to a maximum 127 bytes ahead otherwise i can go back to 128 bytes backward side so that's it the next addressing mode is implied the last addressing mode is a implied addressing So implied. Implied means something is implied. It is not directly mentioned. It is not explicitly mentioned. Mentioned. That's what it is. The so instructions using this mode have no operator. That is what is very important. So far, in all these categories, right? In all these categories, uh, so we have seen that uh, some way operands are mentioned. Address is directly mentioned, immediately mentioned, directly mentioned uh, by giving some indexing, so much of this. But when an instruction does not specify explicitly an operand but operand without operand it will not do something will be there then such kind of instruction uh, is said to be associated with this implied address a good example is this clc stands for clear carry clear carry the carry flag right so when you want to make the carry flag is equal to 0 before doing some particular operation we can use clc there is no distinct operand there is no addition subtraction or thing like that there is no moving operation like that but it only tells the microprocessor that you just clear the carry flag so there is no mention of any operand so when there is no mention of any operand then this is said to be this implied address there are many examples For examination point of view after we study about uh, all the instruction sets you will come to know that uh, you know we should be able to tell which instruction falls under which other category so this is what well so let me stop after this uh, in the next class we will be studying about the instruction set so tomorrow we will start studying with this particular basics of uh, all kind of things we will be start studying about uh, the instruction set very quickly we study the instruction set and then from the next week onwards we will start learning to write the programs also assembly language programs right in your laptops and your pcs itself you can use it. so now before we close the class uh, let me give you uh, let me give you a review question kind of poll 
Would you do that? There's a link there, I'm sure. Whatever that you understand, you please do that. There is not been any response, there is only one response. Three, do it fast. Four. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can ask. I have seen uh, many of you are logging in through Gmail. The next class onwards, I will not forget. You have to come through to the video. Please remember this particular point. If you don't come with a Petra video mail, the attendance will not be given. Granted. Like uh, Yashwant and uh, some of that you, you watch. The next class of words you have to change. Don't ever come with Gmail. So there has been 16 responses. Quit fast. 18 responses. Uh, 86 students or 87 people. Fast. Those who have completed that, there's one more question coming to you. Wait, last. Uh, you can see uh, 95 percent of the people uh, of that part the data set is quite great responses 90 percent of the people have said yeah. so for the base calculation the register that is used for base calculation instruction register indirect so the question is you register indirect person. okay and uh, it doesn't mean that uh, other segment registers are used, not used, they are also used. So depending upon the addressing mode, uh, you should be able to tell which register is used to calculate the base of this. So this one so I'm happy that at least uh, 90, like more than 90% of the people so give the correct answer for this. So now you do the second one.
the responses of the query. Okay, so this question, okay, we have had the answer for this. You can stop doing that because that has not been done so far. I thought of covering that. Fine. So, students, so I think now time is over. Thank you all for joining the class. I will be sharing as usual uh, the video and the, 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 the so slides. Again, good. Right. So we have covered so much of this, right? And even a huge amount of topics are still available, pending to be completed. So don't postpone anything. So if you like the subject, you should develop your attitude of liking the subject. It should be really, really a good. Subject. So we cannot afford to lose any single part of this. Don't memorize, don't try to mug up, that is what not help you. And comprehend the subject properly. If you find any difficulty, right, you can make you know so that I can have some private sessions. So apart from this kind of sessions, for those like slow learners, if people like you know, want some more explanations, we can have some separate sessions also, maybe the weekends or the evenings also. Thank you all for joining. So we'll meet tomorrow. Have a nice time.